Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back. It's John Pettypaw. It's 1.30 in the afternoon on Friday, the fourth day of June 2021. Welcome back. I just finished watching the Daily TV Mass on Vision Television. I heard part of this morning. I was on the phone. I said, I'm going to stop and eat dinner a little bit later, and I'm going to get the Mass over. Priest gave an excellent homily after the reading of the Gospel he, on Helen Keller. Helen Keller is somebody I read a book on in grade school. Loved her. I don't want junk and trash. I want politics, business, biographies. And she was a remarkable lady. She was, she was it went at 19, year, 19 months old. She became both blind and deaf. So she did Braille and she went on to great... There was a lady called Ann Sullivan worked with her as a special tutor, and it was remarkable what this lady did. Anyway, the priest used his homily and example. Somebody went for a walk in the woods and came back and told her she'd been gone to a walk in the woods. What do you see in your walk? And the individual told her, nothing much. And Helen Keller taught to herself, how what vision could you go with a walk in the woods and uh, she could neither hear, nor speak, nor see. She couldn't hear, couldn't speak, couldn't see. Most of us would be frustrated beyond belief with just one of those afflictions, let alone other to treat them. And so how, she said, can I be happy and I can't hear, speak, or see, and you went through the walk in the woods and seen nothing much. Now, I'm doing a video today on thalamidomide. Thalamidomide is a, was a drug that was brought out, and it's for morning sickness. When ladies are having babies, mothers and women are having babies, and early trimester morning sickness. I don't have to explain you morning sickness. Most people know what it is. And people didn't realize the side effects. And you've got birth defects. I'm not going to mention the individual's name. It's somebody I've known for over 40 years and a privilege to work with for 23 years. And uh, I have a personal connection with this because I, I seen a piece in the Globe and Mail and I brought it to the lady and she started working on this in 2014. So 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It's seven years. The lady is in her eighth year of working on this. And her son is a timidimite victim. In this world, everybody Nowadays, wants money. There's like this, this, that, and that. Everybody's, everybody's a victim. I will not call her son a victim. He is a survivor, a minimized survivor. Most of those kids, they had went through hell, and some, sad to say, on rare occasions, the parents left them, and they, they died of lack of love. Okay, uh, almost that's the exception, not the rule. But they, they, this gentleman now is actually he's a year different from me, so he's, he's uh, sixty. Okay, we're, we're born in the same month, one year apart. And I've known that guy since he came in my store and used to come and buy cigarettes. And I don't approve of drinking, and I don't approve of drugs, and I don't approve of tobacco. That said, if you went through what this gentleman went through, maybe even I'd smoke. Okay, but tobacco he's smoking, not more than that. And uh, because he was deaf, didn't have nerve endings, he couldn't speak. When you can't hear, you don't learn to speak. Remember one time you went for a job in Halifax. He's living in Halifax. And um, a friend shared an apartment and he went to get a job. And uh, he went to a hotel. And he went, applied for dishwasher. Now he couldn't, he couldn't hear, but very capable worker. He has one cub arm and one, but he's certainly very capable work, great work ethic. And they wouldn't hire him once they seen he had an interpreter and because he couldn't speak. And I can go on. I'm not going to get too personal. He lives in a neighboring province with his son. And uh, he's gotten some pretty serious health problems as he gets older. His, his, uh, a lot of stuff. His heart and, and different stuff. But he's, he's a, I've known this guy. He has, he has siblings. There's three other siblings in that family. By far, what did other siblings like to hear it? This particular guy is by far, I normally don't pick favorites, the patience and decency of that what a guy you knew from a teenager, as a young man, it's now 60 years old, takes and it's un tremendous. He's just he's very intelligent, kind and good. They've been working this timidamide for 
eight years now. It first started out under Stephen Harper when it was introduced. The, the Globe and Mail article basically made the government act quick, and they put a program together. And uh, he didn't have. You had to have the. You had to have the. The prescription that the timidamide was given to you by, from the doctor, or the doctor's files, or the drugstore. And of course, lady had four young kids. This guy is the second oldest of her four kids. Husband had a business. Her late husband had a business, and she's a busy mother. And she didn't have the. The, to, didn't have the, the prescription. And the drugstore has since gone out of business. It's been sold out to buildings used for something else in Anakinish. And the doctor delivered the baby, has long since died. His records, God knows what are. <coughs> interestingly, <coughs> interestingly, and Anakinish, the records are all gone at Old St. Martin's. Not blame it, signing blame, but. In Halifax, where this guy so many times that surgeons tried to make out of his deformed hand, they brought him to Halifax so many times for operations, they take him down the street and he'd act up. He knew he was going down Summer Street and don't go into the hospital for more at the end. And the mother told me, we can't bring him anymore. But enough, enough. I've seen those records. And IWK or the hospital in Halifax, Old Victoria General, has all the records. So they had records. But anyway, it's gone on for a long time. And I'm asking you, I normally don't advocate for government. The guy's circumstances are dire. And there's not many left. There's very few. They've almost all died. I don't know if the numbers were greater, but some sort of other situation, high-profile group, they'd all be cheering. We don't really know. I know Peter McKay's office had somebody in, in, in um, New Glasgow. There's one there. And the mother's in the early 80s. And there's not many left. And they need help. And we have... That Justin Trudeau boy in Ottawa, they criticized Stephen Harper. There was a member of parliament here was extraordinary. Roger Kuzner phoned his mother up on a Christmas Eve afternoon one day. And it was a guy by the name of Brown, Gordon Brown, Ontario. And they worked across the floor. The conservative member of parliament from eastern Ontario, Gordon Brown. He was a gentleman. He later died. And Roger went to his funeral. That's the gentleman Roger Kuzner was from wonderful Cape Breton Island. And Gordon Brown, when he's alive, had phone drops. It is not politics, but somehow, somebody out there, that guy in Ottawa for time being, Justin Trudeau, Minister of Health, and she's been on this fall for eight years. This is the eight years she's in. In the name of God, somebody phone up, contact your member of parliament, and bring the... There's some intimate survivors. I don't know how many's left. There's Crawford's Associates handling it. She has a note and files upon files of everyone she speaks to, and she has to speak because her son can neither hear nor speak. He has his vision, but he, thank God, and the mother of all she's gone through, and it brings her back to Helen Keller. I'm going to wrap this up. Her and her late husband, her son, went to the school for deaf in Amherst, and she told me one day at work or at her home, Dropped in the sea or something, and she, maybe she was doing a letter for me. And she said, uh, at the school for the deaf, you'd see some children are blind. And it was a Christmas concert, Amherst. And they'd, they'd bring them out, lead them up the stage, they'd sing, and they'd lead them off the stage again. And she said to her husband on their way back home, How lucky we are that our son can see. That our son can see. That is. And it's, she's not an aggressive lady. If she was aggressive, she probably would have had a high-priced lawyer, greedy lawyer on the case or something like that there. But she's worked diligently and persistently. I've gone on quite some time with this, almost 10 minutes. I'm asking you, name of God, and if you'd have to know, I'm not naming a name. Local people probably figure out who it is, and that, that's fine. And uh, they take it. There is probably about 100 or so Tim Invite victims 
left in Canada, and survivors, I don't like that word victim, to invite survivors. This gentleman now is 60 years old, and I don't know if I'm not cynical, if the government's waiting for all die or not, but the, their circumstances are difficult. And so with that, contact your member of parliament. Contact your member of parliament. And for the name of God, try to adjourn him. I'd like to know what the fees were that have been given to Crawford Associates. I've seen the files, and she said, doesn't write as big as me. It's unreal how much time this lady has patiently. A lesser woman would have got frustrated and told them whatever. Okay, but words I can't say on, on this video. So with that, all the best. God bless. Thank you for listening to me the last ten and a half minutes. And contact your member of parliament. It's the Timidite victims. And they take in survivors. I keep saying that word victims. Timidite survivors. And I've known this guy now for what? Since the early 1980s. I've known him for over four decades. For over 40 years now. Almost 40 years. With that, i got to go. I thank you very much. Until next time, all the best. God bless. And pray for some sort of settlement. And I ask him the world to give them a little bit of worldly comforts in the remaining years in the search. Thank you. Bye for now.